Hello again and welcome to my Luminar Neo Magic Lights AI review, tutorial and demo video. So as you can see in the extensions here at the moment, we have HDR Merge, Noiseless AI, Upscale AI, Background Removal AI, Focus Stacking AI, Super Sharp AI, and if I scroll down, we have Magic Light AI. Now, the one thing is, if you're trying this now today, on the date of release of this video on the 12th of December, you will not see this available as of yet but it is going to be available on the 15th of December. So it's going to be released on the 15th of December. Skylam have been kind enough to send me out a pre-release copy so I can show you what it's all about, demo the software, and show you how to use it. So uh, if I go back to my catalog here now, I have two photographs here now that I want to show you how to use it on. So uh, the first one I'm going to pick is this fella because I think this is the classical application for the software because if I go back here to the catalog, the other one is a Christmas tree. You're not going to be shooting Christmas trees on your own, but something like this shot here now. So what we have here is is we have a person walking down the street in a poorly lit scene. We have some street lights and a light above here. And the problem with the likes of this is that we're shooting in very low light conditions. Right? So, in other words, this is this is probably as good as we're going to get in the likes of this shot. So, um, we're going to go in here to edit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open Magic Light AI. And here we have an amount slider, size, beam width, glow, clearness, brightness, number of beams, and rotation. So, already you can imagine by number of beams, this is going to add beams into our image. So, if I just grab the amount slider and open this out. Now, if I whack it up full, which no one is ever going to do, please do not whack this up full. <laughs> please use this carefully. Don't just put it in every photograph. But just to show you, I'm going to whack it up full because there's two things I want to show you here. So the first thing you'll see is it adds this lovely starburst to your image and it also copies. You can see the color of the rays there. It's actually copying the coloring of the light source. This is quite a blue light. This is kind of a, a warmer, more yellowy light. So here, the rays are yellow. Here, the rays are more cool and they're blue. Now, what else can we do to this? Before I tell you anything else, we have our size control here. So the size control is adjusting the overall size of how far out these impact the image. We have beam width, which is the thickness of the beams. So I can make it more detailed like that, sharper, I suppose. And you can kind of blur them out slightly by bringing the beam width up. We can adjust the glow, which is the glow around the actual light source itself. And we have clearness then too as well again, which is going to add a bit more definition to it. So if you want a large beam width, you can then adjust the clearness too as well to get them as sharp as you want or as blurred as you want. So you can see there's, there's, there's quite a difference there now in the two doors. So if we bring it just somewhere there now for argument's sake and click on brightness, I can adjust the brightness too as well. Number of beams, we can adjust the number of beams actually coming out from each light source. So I think, yeah, seven, eight, nine, something along those lines. Then we can adjust the rotation of the beams. So you can actually spin the beams around. Right, now this all looks really cool. And as I mentioned, the color toning too as well of the beams, that is absolutely brilliant. Now, if I go back here and if I say, look, I just want to bring this down a small bit. And we say, oh yeah. That looks cool now. That looks really awesome. Ideally, you'd love to be able to get these naturally in the photograph by shooting an aperture of something like f16 or maybe even f14 or something to give you a natural starburst. But because this is quite a poorly lit scene, you can't shoot at f16 because if you did, you would have to bring your ISO probably up to ISO 25,600 because you want to be able to freeze that person walking. So it's a Robin Peter to pay Paul effect. But what you can do is you can actually pop this into Luminar Neo afterwards. Now, the other thing with this is you might say, oh my God, I love all these, but I don't like that particular one. What I can do is I can go up here, I can go on masking, I can go on my brush, and I can go on erase, and I can just boom, 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 boom. There we go. Job done. Or you might say, look, the reflections here too as well. I don't like those. Or there's like, you know, there's there's a second, there's a second light coming out here now. So what you can do is if I zoom in on that, I can zoom way in along here and I can just get rid of that. And that, and that, and that, and that. The best way of doing that, generally speaking, is to bring your strength way down. So if I grab the strength slider, and um, what I can actually do is I can bring that and just adjust this one down here a small bit, and adjust this one down here a small bit. So I'm actually just getting rid of just that beam there and just that beam there. That looks better than now. And what I can do just to make it a small bit better even again is just get rid of that small bit of light there and there. Maybe another small bit here. All right. Sorry, I actually just realized in doing that, what I've actually done is going control Z, I've actually got rid of that. So I want to get those out again, sorry. And as you can see, it has added in a really cool effect there now. I might actually just go in here because I think I've actually just killed that off a small little bit. So just painting it back in along there a small bit and then just erasing the few extra little bits here in the mask. And that's starting to look a small bit better now. Yep. 
that looks good now a bit above the top there we go so that is our finished photograph and again just to go back so this is before and that is afterwards before and afterwards and again of course you can go back here and you can adjust the intensity you might say a brightness i want to bring that back a small little bit and you say ah oh, somewhere there is really cool now that looks really cool that looks really nice so i can go before afterwards before afterwards so it really does help an image I, I i genuinely when i was trying this i was going ah uh, i don't know um i don't think so being honest sure but i can i can see how that is going to come in handy so the handy little tip i have for you here now is if i want to put in a fake light let's say for argument's sake there now that this is going to be my light so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back here to develop and what i'm going to do is i am going to go to masking i'm going to add in my brush tool and i'm going to zoom way in along here now and i am going to paint that area in and what i'm going to do is i am going to go back here now and whack my exposure way off up along highlights up and shadows up so that is my light no um what i'm gonna do is i am just going to paint that piece another small bit there just get that a small bit better it's... so there's my light there now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to magic lights and i'm gonna whack this up along and you will notice it has done nothing on the fake light i'm after putting in because it knows it's after being painted in so what we can now do is export this photograph and then re-import it back in lumen and eo will no longer know that we've just painted that light in so here we are back in our catalog and here is our photograph there's our original and here is our photograph now so if i click on this you can see my very rough edit there i'm gonna click on magic lights ai and whack up the slider and boom there we have it there is our effect here now so you can do it but the trick is you need to export the photograph pop it back in along again and away you go now obviously magic lights ai has been put on this image twice so it looks completely artificial but that's just a super fast way of showing you how you can put in an artificial light and get magic lights ai to work on it so our second photograph here then is the christmas tree and obviously enough you're not going to be photographing christmas tree all your own but i just thought it was a really good example obviously enough i have one at home too as well so i said look i take a photograph of it last night and we're gonna pop it into magic lights and catch it and whack that up along and boom there you go that is really cool and again of course you can adjust the size you can adjust the beam width too as well and you can adjust the glow around it so you can make it really really cool and adjust the clarity of small but maybe somewhere there yeah and brightness we'll bring that there number of beams we leave that at seven again and then what i do is i just bring the amount back down along a small bit again until you say to yourself oh my god love that that looks really cool so that is before and that is after so that is magic lights ai and that is available on the 15th of december 2022 and that will be one of the last extensions for this year i believe so thanks very much to everyone over in the skyland team for sending me out an advanced copy and that's basically it for today guys so um see you out there and mind yourselves